we can actually do depth estimation from a video where we just have a single camera that goes in and estimates the depth in the images. So we just pass in a full video, every single frame, it will pass it through an AI model that does depth estimation and then we get the results back. These models here, some of them, they can output relative depth, so relative to the camera, distance relative to the camera, and some of them can also output absolute depth, which is the actual, like the real metric distance to the objects. So this is what we're going to take a look at in this video here, how we can set it up. There's a very popular model, it's very good. It's called Depth Anything V2. Let's just jump straight into it and see how we can actually run it. This is an open source model, very, very popular model, Depth Anything V2, and it's very simple to get running and the level of details is crazy good. It's very cool to go in and combine it with, for example, op detection. So let's say that you have a pipeline where you have a YOLO model, you get your detections, then you have a depth map on the sideline, and then you can combine that. For example, instant segmentation mask, you can take the average of all the mass pixels and then you can index that in the depth map, average that up, and then you get a rough distance to your object. This is a pretty cool pipeline. I've used this in tons of different computer vision projects out there. But you can see the level of details, do comparisons with the different models. And one of the cool things here is that it is very good on video, so pretty much just tracking like temporal information so it doesn't change too much frame to frame. Some of the earlier models, if it just take every single frame individually, it doesn't really have good depth estimation from frame to frame. There's a lot of flickering, a lot of noise and so on, but these models here are becoming so good. They have a bunch of different models. One of the good things is that they are rather small. So you can see we have a large base, small, and this small in base, you can definitely run those near real time, especially if you have a GPU available. All you have to do is just get clone, depth anything, requirements and so on, but I'm going to show you how we can do it. I've opened up my code editor here. We have the script depth anything v2, and then I'm going to run it through a bunch of videos so we can see the results. Before recording this video here, I already have a output so you can see the level of details, these fish here swimming around. This is the input video. So it's act like a very hard case, just figuring out which fish is closest to the camera recording this video. So just take a look at it. We see the fish in the foreground here. It looks very good. And the fish in the background, it just looks very awesome. We have a plane here flying through, so you can see some temporal, temporal differences because we have absolute depth or relative depth. So this is actually changing the scene because if something is closer, for example, here to the camera compared to the other, it's actually going to scale that. So you'll usually use some references to scale the values, normalize them. You can also take a look at some of the newer models, which has metric depth information or pretty much just better relative depth because this Plane here is definitely not getting closer. It's probably a similar distance away. It's just because we have this tower peaking up, which is much closer to the camera. And it's pretty much just dividing it into like intervals down there where the closest objects are pretty much just the hottest or the closest in values. So this is pretty cool. This is what we're going to take a look at how we can run it because it's actually pretty simple. But the level of details you get around the objects is very good compared to if you use a stereo camera or like a depth camera that acts like just outputs metric depth. So we'll take a look at the script here. We have a class depth anything predictor. So from depth anything v2 dpt, this is the model that we need to import. So depth anything two. First of all, they are based on the visual transformers of the VIT. We have the small, base, and large. So this is the variations that we saw inside the GitHub repository. First of all, we check if CUDA is available, MPS or CPU, and then it's going to run the model on that device. If you have CUDA, it's going to run real time. It's pretty crazy. You can combine the YOLO models with the estimation in real time if you're using the base or the smaller version. So now it's pretty much just going to set up the model configs, depth anything with two. We grab the model configs and the specific encoder that we have chosen. We're just going to default to VITB. You can also specify the device directly, but it will do a check if it's available. So then we create an instance of our depth anything v2 model. We get our model, we can load the state tick. So this is the PTH, this is the model weight and the model that we're pretty much just loading with PyTorch. Then we put it on our device and set it in evaluation mode. This is the default color map. You can change the different color maps depending on if you want to have 
red red colors, blue colors, white and black, and so on. So you can set the color map here. To do the actual inference, we just pass in our image. We take our self.model.infer image. So this is a function from the model. We just throw the model through and we get our depth estimation back. So it's going to return this float 32 depth tensor. Then we need to colorize it. First of all, we do a normalization. So it's going to take the min and max of the depth and normalize it um, based on the min and max normalization, pretty much. Then we have the CMAP where we do the colors. So we have RGB floating point values between zero and one because we have them normalized. So this is also what's going to give us our relative depth. Usually you will scale these values with some references that you have at different intervals in your situation or where you're using the camera if you don't have metric depth information. But definitely check out other models out there. There's variations, both AI models, but also just stereo cameras and so on that gives you the relative or the absolute depth, so metric depth, but it's not as accurate and you don't get the same level of details as these models. So then we're just going to apply the color map, multiply by 255 so we can actually like see what's going on. And we put it on signed int 8 because this is images that we're working with. We don't know anything about floating point values when we're talking about pixels that we're indexing in an image. We convert the color here, RGB to BGR. This is the format that OpenCV is using. We infer and save the image. So we read the image, we infer it, we colorize it, and we write it out to a file. Then we, all we have to do to process a video, we just have our infer video, a video path. This can also run on a webcam. So if you just specify a webcam or a zero here for a video path, it's going to use that. And we have our safe path to depth underscore video. This is the number of frames per second. This is just for our video writer. Then we're going to have a while loop. So while true, we're just going to load in frames from our video capture. We throw that frame through our model. We colorize it, we write it out, and then we just show it with OpenCV, the colorized image. That's all we have to do. Now we can just go down and run the inference, but this class here is very simple. It's so easy to get up and running with this depth model. So we have fish.mp4. This is going to be our output. We have our encoder. We're just going to use the small one for now. You can infer an image, you can infer in a video and also webcam. So Python depth neb 2py Make sure that you actually pip install this one. So if you go back to the GitHub repository, let's clone it. So if you run into this problem here, just go in pip install dip anything you too. You can also set it up from the GitHub repository, but this is the only requirement that we need to do and then if you want to use the YOLO models you just have to pip install autolytics it's going to set up all the dependencies torch and everything and then you can both run your up detection models and also your depth estimation model here so let's just give it a few seconds here there we go we should now be able to run our script so this will download the model first of all and no matter what encoder you're choosing it should automatically download the model and you only have to do this once after you have done this is pretty much just going to load that model in the next run. So let's now go back in here. We need to download the checkpoints. We have the small, base, large. We're just going to use this one. Let's just jump back. Let's drop it into our directory. Now I have dropped it into our directory and it should be able to pick it up. X form not available. We don't need that. So right now we can see you to run the inference. This is just running on a CPU and it looks like we're still getting a few frames per second. So this is matching the pre-recorded video that I already showed you guys. You can just pass any video through it. It's probably even cooler to just see it on the webcam. So let's try that one. We just comment it in, comment it in here. There we go. And it will save these videos into your folder over here on the left that so we have our depth output. This is pretty cool. Make sure to check it out, like try it out yourself. Go in, run it, come up with some cool use cases. And here we go. Now we have our webcam running. We have me in the foreground and then we have the microphone. So this is a very good example on pretty much just how to demonstrate the relative depth as I mentioned, because that's probably one of the hardest things to just figure out how does it actually work? How do I scale the values? How do I use the models? Because we can see, let's keep my microphone here. 
and then I put my hand even closer to the camera. We can see the color of the microphone is changing, but you can see in the other camera that it's actually staying in the exact same location. So this is why, this is pretty much what relative depth is doing. It's just the different levels that we have in our camera view. So this is very important to take into account if you don't have metric depth, but some of these models here can also output metric depth information. This is very, very awesome. Again, you will have the depth output over here on the left side. So we can grab it. Let's take a look at the output. So this is the fish video. And then we also have the other one with our webcam. You can play it back, share this on LinkedIn, tag us. This is pretty cool. Make sure to go in and check it out. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.